If time permits. If time permits. All right. I might have to pull up that list. Let me just hide this shit. So okay. It's not too sloppy. I'll keep this case down. All right, here. we're about to start. Relax, Jeff. He's got to be like rolling. He's going to have to roll through this. How's it going this week? It's going good, you? All right, it's going all right. You know, last week uh, we were talking, we were forgot to do a little review about the thread lift that I did. Yeah, we want to hear all about it. I mean, first of all, you look awesome. Thank you. No yeah. secrets barred. I mean, I want, you know, if I do something that works, I want to tell people. I want to hear the pros, the cons, the highs, the lows, and the recovery process, which is... Um, it, not that much to report. I mean, everything is all on the internet about it. But what they do is, like, you know, if you need to fill in your cheeks, like as we get older, our skin starts to sag, gravitational forces. Well, you start to Don't lose only fat, work on our boobs. Right? You start to lose fat in your face. It's one of the first places as And your age. boobs. Yeah, the fat all drops down. What so you get this? in your Could it not stop at your boobs perhaps? No, unfortunately, I think it drips down from your eyelids, <laughs> down your cheeks, down your boobs and it keeps going down to your hips and ass. Does and it like settle in your knees where it gets Basically, oh, yeah, basically lovely. it settles in your knees and we get and we get cellulite around the knees. <laughs> Things so to the fat too. <laughs> so the fat drops. So, yeah, and, and uh, so I don't have much fat in my face. Now over the holidays, um, you know, I took some time off, so did you, and I decided to just kind of eat carbs and eat whatever I wanted. So uh, my face did get a little fuller because when you eat carbohydrate, it retains more water. Oh. Carbohydrates just do that. So when you're on a really lean, like protein, high protein diet, uh, one of the reasons why you get, why you look more ripped is because you're actually shedding some water. So you get all chisely. Yeah, that's yeah. what the high protein diet right. does. Um, but now for longevity, the high protein diet might not be the best. So the people who tend to live longer, according to meta studies and epidemiological studies, so not, it's not like they took like a thousand people and put them in a lab for a hundred years and see who live the longest. <laughs> no, it's funny because no one would sign up for that study. Why not? I don't know. Don't you want to live in a lab and see how long you live? Sure. Why not? Be a lab rat. They're yeah. They treat it so well. You know? Exactly. And let the scientists yeah. feed you. So we don't really know, but we do, but they do see that, uh, that, that the higher protein diets uh, don't lend as well for the uh, higher carb diets and the people in the blue zones eat the higher carb, carb diets. So, you know, I'm usually on a high protein diet. So I figure once in a while I'll give myself some slack. And so I don't know if some of the fluffiness in my face is because I'm eating a little more carbs now. I'm having like two servings instead of like zero or one serving of a starchy mm -hmm. carb. So that could be part of it. Mm -hmm. But the thread lift basically does... You know, it, it's like getting filler, but instead of like getting a bunch of injections and vials of injections, they take a thread with collagen on it right. and they make a little pinhole in your cheek on each side. They thread it through and then there's hooks on the inside and it just kind of like grabs into your skin. They put it in, be in the, between the dermis layers. Oh. So it just sort of stays there. Oh, cool. And then, yeah, you feel some pulling and some tugging in the beginning and because it hits some nerves, you feel like a little spark. I wouldn't say it's painful. It's just like, a, ooh, what was that? Yeah. You know, like you, you get like some static electricity, like oh, a little. Yeah. Oh, what's oh, that? Oh yeah, that little shock. Yeah, that and it's not shockers. even it's not even as bad as that. But okay. you just feel like a little. Oh, oh, I hit a nerve. Oh wow. And so that happened for like a few weeks. Um, the first week I felt it a lot because I was, I got it and went right to the Tony Robbins conference and you're yelling and you're moving your face a lot. And I was eating some nuts and I wasn't supposed to, you're not supposed to eat anything hard. So I felt a few, quite a few sparks. Um, but, uh, if, if I wasn't, if I was just laying low, that, that wouldn't have happened. But what about your face itself? Did it show pin marks? Or no, anything? I mean the day of, uh, you saw the pin marks. The next day I went in to teach a class. I couldn't do the workout cause you're not supposed to jar your body. Yeah. So I went in to teach a class and I showed my students because you know I'm an open book I showed my students okay I got this red list let me know if you let me know if you see a difference and I showed them the little pinprick hole yeah you couldn't see it it was so That's tiny cool. yeah. yeah and that was it like I didn't even need makeup there was no bruising no nothing and uh, then I went to Mexico and the the shock subsided and I was really laying low that second week because we got sick so then I got home and the third week I felt like a little bit of tightness around my jaw Nothing major. Okay. Just felt like, like you know, when you sleep and you grind your teeth and you wake up in the morning, there's a little stiffness. 
that was it. But how do you notice the difference? Like, do you notice the difference personally? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's expensive. So each thread that you get, like one set of threads is like 1500 or more. Okay. And then, uh, so I got two threads. It was 3500 Now we're in Beverly Hills. So doctors yeah. cost more. Right. So, you know, depending on where you live, it might cost less. Right. And you can see a lot of videos on YouTube. And it's not like a facelift. It's more like a filler. Oh, okay. And so it worked nice. I feel like there's some filling in my cheeks. I feel like a little less, a little less jowly. Yeah. Of course, we always want more. I yeah. want, I wanted a full-on facelift. I wanted up. A... You want your 20-year-old face? So do I. I wanted the Brazil. <laughs> I wanted that, like from the movie Brazil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I know that with, that with that thread lift, it gets better with time. Okay. So I think it takes like six months to get full, full, full results. Two months, you get like really good results. Like, okay. So I'm at like yeah. a month and a week yeah. right now, and so. It can it only is. get better. It's like one of those things, not like age. Well, yeah. It gets better with time. Few things get better with <laughs> yeah. age. Um, well, yeah, cheese and wine. Yeah. And so what do you, how do you think it looks? I think you look great. I see fullness. Do you think I it's do worth, see fullness. And you don't think that's from the carbohydrates I'm eating because every part of me is a little fuller right now. No, you don't look fuller anywhere else. So. I am. I don't have like my no. normal six pack. Aww. Yeah, and well, that's from the carbs. I mean, yeah. I cut I think those you out. Look good. I think you look smoother, okay. like from the cheekbone down here, and it's ah, yeah, I good. like it. Okay. Um, I also think that it probably lasts like a good two years. So, I'm like filler that you have to do so every he, year. Yeah. So the filler, when you get a Viola filler, that's like what eight nine hundred bucks. Yeah. So you get four of those. That's four thousand. Yeah. And so it, so I, the, my philosophy or theory on doing it was like, well, if I get four vials of filler, um, that'll last maybe just over a year. Yeah. Uh, it's a little more cost effective to do this for 3500 if it's the equivalent of doing four $800 vials. Well, so, you know, and I've had doctors, I went to see several doctors in Beverly Hills for opinions, and then some of the most renowned doctors are against fillers because they say it stretches out your skin after once it wears off. It's pumping you up. So what happens is your skin gets even worse off once it wears off, and then it's a, like, you know, it's a never-ending process then. Oh, well. Yeah, right? So I <laughs> don't know, you but do? then when you're losing fat in your face, what's, you know, what's the difference? I, I like these doctors who say that was so where they're like don't get filler don't don't well, give yeah, me two thousand dollars you don't want the money and they're like no i wouldn't do filler i like those doctors yeah, who I say like i don't want that so that well, is perhaps they want you to do surgery <laughs> so oh yeah, yeah. and but then yeah. they you have to save up for that but i there is a, a doctor that i follow i've been following for a while i heard him so i'm a big podcast listener so i heard him on uh on Tim Ferriss first and then a couple of years later he started his own podcast and his name's Peter Atia. Right. and he was just talking to a doctor friend of his because he interviews other doctors and so I'm just like all I ever listen to is my I mean I love podcasts but I mostly listen to medical stuff right. and um, so and health and fitness and medical and he was saying exactly what I always tell people coming from you know several surgeries and I've ha been lucky enough to get really great doctors mm -hmm. If a doctor is really good, they don't want your money. They make enough money from That's people who think, really right. need them. And they're not all over the internet on every, like they're hard to, like I try to look up some doctors that are really good and they don't have a website. Yeah. Like yeah. they're kind of like so good, they don't even need that, you know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or there's not much about them if they do. It's very simple. It's right. You all... went to a consult with a doctor who like sent you away. Yeah. And then I went to yeah. the same doctor. So in LA, if you, and you're here, there's a guy named Dr. Groth. He is famous for foreheads. Well, he does only eyes and yeah, foreheads. Forehead. That's his specialty. Because he's a, a plastic and reconstructive ophthalmologist which is like the highest yeah, level you can right. get for someone who does just this area and he doesn't do anything else. Nothing else. And so and a friend of mine went to him too and he's amazing. If he doesn't think he can help you and he doesn't think it'll make an improvement he sends you away. Well, yeah. That's the sign I of a good doctor. I went to get consults for several times for my eyelids and mm -hmm. he kept saying it's too soon. It's too soon. I'm like but here's the money and he's like it's too soon. So right. he's not into it. He charges a lot when he does it Yeah. but he won't do it if it's not time. Yeah so that's so we we weren't really anticipating talking about this topic, but yeah. that is how you pick a good doctor. Right. If they t if they if they won't see you, if they if they send you away and say come back later when you need it more, right. that's a good doctor. A doctor who's just ready to like you know when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. If they're just like oh come in, we'll do this, we'll do that. If they want to do everything on you, they need the money. Right. Well, and some it, doctors think you're best to avoid going under the knife and try to do everything via laser or whatever else. 
and try to avoid cutting skin generally. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I want to do the CO2 laser next, so I got to save up money. Oh or we'll get some sponsors. <laughs> sponsors, and then I will. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to try that CO2 laser because I've done a couple of chemical peels, which are wonderful. But uh, now that I am using Retin-A more regularly, I can't do a chemical peel. So I was wondering if the CO2 laser would yeah, work. Yeah, and that explains totally why you get better results than I do, and I can't do those things because you have that thicker skin. I have thicker skin than and you. And my skin is so thin. It's too sensitive so a lot yeah. of people tell me not to do these laser things yeah because i'm not going to get the results you're going to get the optimum results you're the perfect skin type for them i'm not perfect i mean that so well, the, this doctor me. um he said that my my skin is you know is a little bit thin but you know i'll still get good results but I, like i'm not i don't have i don't have thick skin like those are women who are black hispanic yeah, but you have a, an olive base to you i have an olive yeah. base true yeah so but I, do, I so i don't have the thickest skin i mean you know if i was african-american yes right so they're probably best well, off my mediterranean friends they can take as much sun as they want and they don't seem to wrinkle or you know like your husband yeah yeah they don't get they have that thick skin it keeps them Let's really get him on some retin-a <laughs> a little laser yeah. a little tightening <laughs> Cause he's starting to get, he's starting to get, he's always had that. That's sort of a genetic thing with him. the, the turkey neck. Yeah. All right. Well, he's time for him yeah. for a thread lift. Let's get Ben. <laughs> he will hate get in there. saying that. <laughs> ben will never hate me. No, he won't hate you. It's like, he's got a mirror. He yeah. knows. He knows, but you know, <laughs> Jim's got it too. Now Jim's got the two stripes down the front. I'm um, like Botox, honey, it's time. Well, Ben finished medical school and he just believes to wait as long as you can before you do anything. Cause then you look like, well, that's the thing is if you wait till like, you know, you're, you're 60 years old now you're looking like shit and then you go in you walk out and you look like you're 30 yeah. like there's a problem and it lasts longer then you know then you don't true. have to redo it in 10 years again or... true but it looks too dramatic it's like who are you fooling <laughs> it's okay who are you fooling let everyone be fooled who gives a shit <laughs> but no no but you're not fooling anyone because you walk out 60 I and mean, you walk in 60 and you walk out looking 35 on your face but your hands are wrinkled your exactly are exactly so yeah. i say do so I, I i i had a client one who was um a woman who is uh 70 years old and she looked maybe 55 60 mm -hmm. but she did a little bit every year that's a good yeah a little it's something like maintaining your teeth you know like you have to keep them clean you yeah. gotta whiten them once in a while but she would do a little bit yeah. more each year I so she get the like this yeah. laser and she do a little bit more she yeah. had a little bit of a lift and then like five years later a little another little lift so i think a little bit at a time personally i don't think walk in 60 look walk out 35 and then your hands are wrinkled like you yeah, said exactly yeah. you have to do everything from head to toe but, well then now that's a different story and then you just have to change your id hey, what about your elbows man did you ever think I get that when in my pictures I get them photoshopped so if you go to my website and you see me in all those push-ups and planks my photographer was like what you know he's like what should we do about that I'm like surgery well now I have this thing because now I'm looking at everyone's elbows you know like I got this new thing it was the neck before now it's the elbows that are driving me crazy yes I already I already knew that because when I would do pictures and I do I love to do horizontal pictures and planks I'm really good with like push-ups and mm -hmm. plank stuff and I can make them look good but then you see the skin this a little skin hanging <laughs> and my photographer I'm like oh you're an am I wish you were a plastic surgeon you are amazing you <laughs> yeah. have the Midas touch I'm like oh my elbows look so much better and so does that Maybe little one day we just go and we have a body scan thing and it just automatically photoshops your whole body but like a surgery like it just sucks everything in oh that would be amazing like a suntan bed except it has like this laser thing goes when 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 we're holograms yeah all right so um for me it costs 3500 to do the, to do the thread lift okay. if it's worth it i i don't know but it's you know it seem it's very natural everything dissolves into your skin you know there's nothing well, you like look great i mean i thanks. really there's do nothing I fake see, in there you had a little more chisely under your chin yeah. you know like now it's good smoother, good good so okay. i like it all right so like um it. if i get before and after pictures i'll i'll post yeah. them all right so what was our next topic that was that oh our bitch fest oh god yes do you yeah. want to start with yours or you want me to start I've been talking enough about my face, so let's talk about okay, well, your me, bitching. It's hormone hell. So here's what's going on. I take the pill like you do. I take a lower version. You take the low estrogen. I take the low low. And I just take it consecutively. I skip the, uh, you know, those um, placebo pills, which are just iron anyway, because that's usually when you get your period. Oh, I thought they were sugar. No, they're iron because I called a doctor to find out. I said, you know, I, I didn't take the placebos. I thought that's why my hormones were all screwed up. And he goes, well, those are just iron anyway. Because, you know, when really? you're menstruating, you're losing iron, you're losing blood. So basically, you have to supplement it. They give you a light dose of iron. I pause for a second. So if anyone takes this particular pill, the one that's, the, it's, it, it'll be like minastrin or loestrin, FE, FE stands for iron. 
I skip those four fake ones. Well, we do. I do too. And my iron levels are through the roof ever yeah. since I've been on it. So yeah. I think there's iron in the not, regular. You're not getting a regular menstruation. That's why. Okay. Not, that's why you're not losing a lot of blood. But okay. some girls who are much younger than us have regular periods, okay. lose a lot of blood. Yeah, I used to have low yeah. iron levels. Right. Because I had such At our bad age, periods. That's why we don't need to take those four anymore. We can okay, just go cool. from pill to pill. So anyway, Got they it. deliver my pill to me, and uh, I guess. So there was a problem, and I didn't end up getting it when I was supposed to get it, and I ended up being a whole weekend without it, and I didn't think there'd be a big deal. Because usually I end the first the pill on the last day, and I start the new one the very next day. I don't do the placebos. Oh, you don't? You no, just no, go every I day? Go every day. Oh, I, I wait the four days. No, no, I don't. They told me not to. Because there's no point at my age. It's sort of like taking hormones when you're going through menopause. It's just that's the same principle. What? That's I did not right. know that. Well, that's why you're so bitchy all the time when you get Goldberg your did not tell me <laughs> yeah. that. We have the same doctor. Yeah. Jay. So, <laughs> so anyway, that's what so I So last do. time I'm letting him doing an anal probe on me. Right. Well, come on, you enjoy that. How can you take yeah, the things you like? It's sad because it's sad because his skinny little <laughs> it's the finger. The reason she goes every year. So I don't even feel know. that skinny little finger of his anymore. I'm like, that's sad. <laughs> Maybe you need a doctor with big hands. I guess I don't even <laughs> notice it anymore. The or throat was gone. It doesn't say much about your anal area then. That's what, what I'm saying. <laughs> like it's, the throat was gone. I don't even feel his finger anymore. I'm like, what? Did you do it? You have to do some anal kegels. Are you in? <laughs> <laughs> you have to kegel your anal area. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. The, the sphincter kegel. So anyway, I missed these two days of not going right directly to the next pill. And I'm telling you, I went through every high and low possible. I was like almost suicidal. Like I felt horrible and I didn't think I'd be so affected. It was awful. I was tired. I was getting um, cramps galore. I was feeling very down and I couldn't pull myself up. I couldn't get motivated to do anything. I never felt so bad in my life. It was like the worst case of PMS I've ever had. And then when I started it on Monday and I finally got my prescription, immediate improvement. I'm like, I am never going off this stuff. Oh I am my human God. with it on. I don't have headaches like I do. And like I was just horrible. It was like a bad, bad, just like a bad drug effect that almost was like an after effect of something that you've been taking that makes you feel so good and normal. All of a sudden it's taken away from you and the blood sucked out of you and you have no life left to you. Yeah, bad reference having the blood sucked out of well, you. Well, you know what I mean. Like the life sucked out of you. And yeah. I just feel, wow. yeah, I felt terrible. Um, my so mind I is went blown. so down in my mind, so great depression. I was scared. I really got scared. That's mind blowing because I don't take those four those four days and that doesn't happen to yeah, me. So maybe I'm not used to it anymore. But the minute I started it, it was like immediately felt better. Holy moly! So it really works to regulate your hormones. I think for me, it's very important. It's working to keep my hormones in check. Wow! So I miss four days. I wonder. I wonder what the difference will be. Interesting. Try it. Try it. Yeah. Okay. So basically, if you have a slight drop in your estrogen. Things turn really south I for you. I think they do. You have to, you know, take some kind of replacement therapy. Some people need it and some people don't. I know someone who completely stopped everything and feels much better. Since. Okay. And I, you know, I always... How old is she? She's 60. Okay. But she stopped at 55. Okay. And I just felt like, you know, maybe one day I want to stop, you know, because I don't feel like having to be dependent on anything. Like, I just like to be free of pills. And even this two-day hellish experience said, no way, never. Like, I was so grateful to have this available to me. Okay. Well, we're going to get, I'm going to try to get one of these um, uh, experts in uh, estrogen, fertility, yeah. OBGYN, naturopathic doctors in. Right. Um, we'll get them as a guest. So we're going to be starting to have guests in the next week yeah. or two. And I'm going to, let's see. It was just really shocking, Jill, because, you know, I'm a person who likes to be in control of everything that's going on in my body. And my mother was totally against all this stuff. She used to use a cream for estrogen that she used to rub into her wrist. Well, what's the difference between rubbing it in and swallowing well, because it? I think this is a balance of estrogen and progesterone and I think some people just need both they need a certain combination so she only did the estrogen yeah yeah you need to balance it because yeah. one affects the other I, I'm, I'm blanking on why I do know why I have it in a textbook but there is a reason why you have to have the estrogen and the progesterone together because one increases and as one increases it makes the other de decrease or something oh and another thing is I couldn't stop eating I was eating 24 all night I would get up in the middle of the night to snack because I was starving oh wow it made me so anxious you know the feeling of having that anxiety that yeah. hyper anxiety and I had to have some comfort food in the middle of the night and you know drink a glass of wine at three in the morning this was not good wow yeah, this was not a good thing and did ben notice did you tell him 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And how'd that go? And I just told him, you know, I just have to close your eyes and ignore me for now. Let me, let me get that birth control pill back and I'll be back on track. You know, he noticed I was a little off, but you know, it wasn't so bad during the day. It got worse at night. You Did you that. get clumsy? Sometimes when my estrogen levels <laughs> drop, I get clumsy. I always clumsy when during <laughs> my period time or my hormonal time. Yeah. Yeah. That is the, that is probably yeah. the weirdest thing. It's like pregnant women, they get the forgets Yeah. and then, you know, they get pregnancy amnesia. And then the, um, and then when my hormone levels change, sometimes I'm like, why am I dropping everything? <laughs> like I pick up a bottle, I drop the bottle. It's like, it's like, there'll be like one day every couple of months where like I spill and knock over everything. Oh, I, mean, I do it in threes. Like the minute I spill something, Thing, and then I drop something on my foot and I hurt my foot or I bang myself or something happens, it happens in threes. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know what that, like, how do I lose coordination? It's, it's funny. Most of these receptors in your brain somehow are affected. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, every, all, all, all of our uh, glands that secrete hormones come from the master regulator in the brain, the hypothalamus. So oh. everything gets regulated up there. You know, they're like, it's pulling all the strings. Well, anyway, I thought I could be ready soon enough to have to give up taking pill and all this stuff, oh, but I don't think so, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely not. I did not. not like that feeling, Jill. It's just not me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'm sorry. That yeah. sucks. Anyway, I'm better now. I'm back okay, on good. track. Woo. Wow. <laughs> I was surprised that the depression hit that hard. Well, okay. And you're less productive. So my, my very brief bitch fest is, um, <laughs> so I, ha I have a client and, uh, that we, and I don't, sometimes I don't know if it's just because he's busy trying to concentrate on his exercise or he's got a lot of things on his mind because he's a Hollywood guy. And, uh, and this happens not just with him, it happens with several other people. And I'll be telling him something for a while. So for example, you know, I might have been telling him about fasting and there's this thing called the fasting mimicking diet, which is a really big trend right now. And um, I'm, I've been following the guy, the, the researcher who created this diet um, for years and I have his book and... Anyway, um, so I've been telling this client of mine about this for a while, and then I went and I did this prolon thing twice. It's a five-day fasting mimicking diet. What that means is your body thinks it's fasting, so you might as well just be drinking water for five days, but when you drink just water for five days, you lose muscle and your metabolism slows down a little bit when you do it, and, and then your metabolism picks back up, so that's really like a, a not too much of an issue, but you do lose muscle, mm. and on the fasting mimicking diet, it's just enough calories in just the right macronutrient percentages so your body doesn't really realize it's actually eating. So you actually, so you're, to, your, to your body in what's called the nutrient sensing pathways, your body's like, oh, I'm not eating, so I'm just gonna shed weight and shed water, but, I'm gonna, but you're giving it just enough to maintain the muscle mass. Anyway, so I told him about this like a couple of times um, when I was planning on doing it and then what it was like when I was doing it and yada, yada. And I said, oh, you know, if you ever want to do it, let me know. And then uh, cut to like however many months or a year later, he's, he hires a nutritionist because he needs to drop like 25, 30 pounds stat. He just can't, ready, can't take it anymore. Right. He needs a nutritionist to put him on a program. So whatever, it's not like I couldn't do it, but for whatever reason, he felt like he doesn't want his trainer to also be his nutrition coach, so he wants to hire a separate nutritionist. Right. And then... He, do, he loses his weight and then he's going on vacation and then he, the nutritionist says to him, when you come back, I want you to do the prolon fasting mimicking diet. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just one example. So this happens all the time. Like, okay, you mean the thing that I've been telling you about for almost two years How now? How frustrating <laughs> yeah, that is. Uh, and, this, and things like that happen all the time. It's like and a bad child. I, whatever it is. Like, I don't, you know? <laughs> I, like, do I not come off as someone authoritative at all or... No, I, don't. I think some people just need to have more opinions. Like when you get a second opinion of okay. a doctor and a third opinion of yeah. a doctor. I like, I like to think of it that way. Because yeah. then I had this other client, another Hollywood guy, one of those guys who went down in infamy. <laughs> um, one of those Hollywood stories you heard on the news. Oh, boy. Yeah, so I had this one Hollywood client, and... Um, the same thing would happen all the time. Like he'd have, you know, some kind of injury. He wouldn't be moving this right or that right. And I'd be like, okay, we have to do this exercise. And, and he's like, no, can't we just do this exercise? And I'm like, no, you really have to do that exercise. And he's like, well, can't we just do this exercise? And I'm like, you're not a lawyer. Stop negotiating with me. And then when, when the injuries would get bad enough, he'd go to his physical therapist and his physical therapist would be like, you got to do this exercise. <laughs> Same one I've been telling him about. I know. So it just, 
when that happens to me, it's like I just want to like, ah. Uh, yeah, but it's like your parents having to say, how many times did I tell you? Da, 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 and you keep doing the same thing, right? And you don't yeah, listen. But, yeah. So anyway, that's my, that's my little bitch fest. I'm like, oh, that just happened again. I just think it's getting reassurance. People need to have several opinions sometimes. You know, they're not okay. sure. And I know, I know you take it more personally because, you know, it's your client and you really care yeah. about what you do and you really try to make a difference. So obviously you want them to take your advice. Yeah. I but mean, I don't think it's personal. Okay. That's cool. All right. I was just wondering, it was just one of those, <laughs> one of those things I felt very bitchy about like two weeks ago. Yeah. Well, don't you like find you tell Jim or I'll tell Ben something and you know, he doesn't listen. Then someone else tells them and they're like, Oh yeah, we got to get that or we got to do this. And Absolutely. Like, it's exactly ah! that. Yeah. I've been telling you that for a month. Right. Yeah. Or a year. Exactly. Or five years. Like, whatever. Why? I have no credibility. Like, exactly. You know, right? It makes me feel like I have less credibility. Thank Thank God I went to the Tony Robbins conference because, <laughs> you know, now I can work on that value and that mindset, you know, that I'm worthy, I'm worthy, I'm are. worthy. Of course you are. And I'm valid and I'm valid. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But, that, but that's it. You, it does make you feel like, what was the word you just used? Like... It's, what word did you just use? Oh, did you? I mean, do you do you not like have faith in me? Like, uh, do you not, you know, yeah, valued, valued or whatever? My, yeah, my, my opinion, opinion. Or do you not have faith in what I'm saying? Or yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So anyway, that I totally feel that. Right. Okay, but there, there's some other really good words like worthiness and value. Like, yeah. Oh, you wanted the word. Yeah, I totally one? forgot because I'm yeah. onto something else now. Okay. I have ADHD right now. I'm All having right. a moment. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll roll back the tape. Yeah. But yeah, so I totally get that feeling like, you know, why do you have to hear it from someone else when I was telling you the same thing? Let's talk about this past weekend. So you had a going away party for your drummer. What? A drummer? Oh, no. That's right. You yes. have a, And Tata has a rock and roll band. Yes, we do. So let's tell everybody about your rock and roll band and how it came to pass that you became a bass guitarist in a rock and roll house band. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, couples that play together stay together. I always believe that because my parents, growing up with my in my childhood, they did so many activities together. Like they had more interest than just raising me or paying bills or jobs. They were actually interested in each other's health, fitness. They did sports together. They traveled together. They read books together. So they had several interests and they painted together. So, you know, and that kept the marriage really strong. And I mean, I think the one thing you have to do is when you have a partner or a boyfriend, the, the way you keep them is to be the, become their best friend. And the way to do that is to take interest in each other. Yeah. So, you know, it's not like I, my lifelong dream was to be uh, uh, in a rock band and be, uh, well, it was maybe, but it never would have happened. So my husband always had a band. He used to play in a band, in a wedding band when he was in college and he used to pay his bills. They used to score a lot of money on gigs, right. you know, and and he had a group of friends and they did that and then when he came to LA I mean music is in his blood it's one of his favorite passions so you know he had a band and they used to play at parties and things like that and I was just you know dancing and you know part not part of the band at the time and then anyway, one day we went on vacation and he had lost his bass player who used to be the bass player for Wham for George Michael so we've ah. had some really you know big names uh, and, and we have professional musicians in the band it's not like we're just a hack band except me <laughs> and so anyway he asked me if I would join the band and then I thought yeah I would love to and then we you know somehow I said I'd either play drums or bass but since we were losing the bass player he says why don't you pick up bass so I did I was taught by him and then by a few of the other musicians and I, I think it it's up. a lot easier than drums <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drums is tough, but I always liked, you know, I always loved drums because I always loved Prince and when he had, um, you know, what's her name, the one that he did the drums? Sheila E. Yeah, Sheila E. Like, you know, of course, in the 80s, I was watching all those movies yeah. and watching Sheila E. So anyway, I learned to pick pick up the bass slowly and I was really shy at the beginning like I wanted to hide in a closet somewhere when we had a gig like the first gigs I almost wet my pants I was like ah, I can't do this you know this is not for me in your living room <laughs> yeah in my living room <laughs> or, you know we did people's parties sometimes you know through our company we did company gigs where we were working um, you know we had one or two times we did actually club gigs where we had people from our work going to a club but there were also people who were in the club who weren't our invited guests yeah so um, I learned to play bass, and then we've been playing together for like way over how many years now? Twelve years. So that's the interesting thing is like most men who are in a band do it to get away from their wife. Yeah, no, that's Ben and I want to be together. We want to we enjoy each other's company truly. Yeah, that is just that. So that's interesting to me. Like he actually 
asked you to be in well, his band. And we work together. I mean, you know, yeah. you've got to have a special relationship for that. It doesn't mean that, I mean, he traveled a lot, so I had a lot of alone time. And, right. you know, we each do our own things. We're not like on top of each other, but we enjoy being near each other. And the more interests we have together, like we play golf together, we play tennis together, you know, you, because what happens is when people have kids and the kids grow up and they leave home, they're like, thanks, mom, dad, now leave me alone. You know, I got my life, I'll call you when I need money, mm-hmm. type of thing. You, 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 the, the couples the marriage fall apart because there's no common denominator there's nothing else to share everything was around the building that family you've got to have other interests true i mean i did there were two of my more recent relationships um before jim broke up because we didn't have enough common interests so yeah. absolutely i and mean if you don't have if you're not best friends and you don't enjoy doing the same silly things together and then when you're on vacation alone you have you know you got to have stuff to do together that you like if there I, was stuff to do but there weren't enough like you yeah. know of course they love fitness and who you know what guy doesn't want to date like you know an LA trainer yeah, or an LA fitness, right. you know. But you do run out of conversation if you're not both on the same level of intellect and you're not keeping up to each other's intellectual needs. Yeah, we weren't into the same sports right. and things like that. Yeah, I mean, he loves sports and I, I can't even sit through a sports game. Like, I don't have that kind of patience. But, you know, a day of golf is a full day. It's like, you know, you're out there for four to six hours and that's a full day and you're enjoying each other, you're socializing, you're meeting other people, you're playing with other people. It's very interactive or it could be very solo. Yeah. And then playing tennis, you know, you can play with couples. So you can have like a foursome in, in, in tennis. And uh, so it's, it's not, it's great for socializing. It's great for keeping a marriage together. And it also burns off a lot of energy. And, and you know, so you might be angry and then you go out and play golf together and you're back to lovey-dovey again. Oh, uh, yeah, that would make sense. Well, so let me, let's, let's dig into the, into the weeds about that a little bit. Mm. So what I got out of it when I first met you is that, oh, Ben asked Anita to be in his band, and Ben asked Anita to learn golf because he loves golf. So did you ever feel like you were doing, and be honest and whatever, I mean, did well, you ever feel like you were doing more of what he wanted than, than he doing what you wanted? I did at one point, but I wanted to play in the band. I just didn't think I had the talent to do it. Like, I figured I'll never learn how to play bass. Forget it. You know, I tried to play guitar when I was a kid with my dad, who used to play guitar with his friends, and I hated it. You know, I always wanted to play piano. That was my passion. That's hard, too. It is hard, (laughs) but I felt naturally inclined to it. You know, when you have a feeling, you're feeling like, oh, I could really like this. So when he told me, he, he thinks that I asked him to be in the band, first of all, which he does. is not true, Ben. No. <laughs> we, were, we were losing our bass player, and you said, what if you joined our band, you know, because... I was always going out when the band practiced. So I would leave the house. Yeah. So he was like, he wants to keep me, you know, with him to do something. So I enjoyed that. The golf thing was like pulling teeth. At the beginning, I'm like, golf? Golf is for old men in polyester pants in Florida somewhere, you know? Right. But then Tiger Woods came along and made it really cool. So, you know, the clothing changed. Everything got, you know, better and younger. So, and more athletic looking. Well, what did you go through mentally when, you know, like, when you were thinking... Maybe, what about him doing the things that I want to do? Well, here's the thing. I grew up with my dad. So my dad made me go cross-country skiing every weekend, and I hated it when I was a kid. I see. So I always had to sort of do what I was told to do in a way. Like ah. it's sort of pre, you know, my dad would tell me, okay, we're going to go skiing. Like it didn't ask me, do you want to go skiing? We were going skiing. Like it's 25 below zero. We're going skiing. Tough it out. 20 well, miles. That's how you get people to do what you want. <laughs> yeah. So we did ah. it as a family because he thought it was important. And I ended up liking it years later. But as a kid, you know, what kid doesn't want to go play with their friends instead of going cross-country skiing in the middle of the woods with their family you know it was just the three of us and my grandparents would come along that was the high oh wow yeah so you know and they would go for an excursion that was a few hours you know like I wanted to go home and watch cartoons and I wasn't allowed to I had to go and go this cross-country skiing so I did it but I'm thankful because it kept me in shape so you're so basically you're you were used to acquiescing to like yeah so my dad the, the kind patriarch of, yeah, of the he, family the patriarch sort of laid down like we were going to go cycling as a family we're going to go sailing as a family we're going to go swimming as a family or sometimes I was just my dad's buddy because I was like a daughter and a son I'm the only child right so he'd wake me up in the morning throw me in the lake he goes yeah you're going swimming I'm like it's six o'clock in the morning he goes I know you got to toughen up he didn't want me to be weak yeah. And he wanted me to enjoy all these sports, which I'm glad he did today because, you know, we were really about staying in shape. We didn't want to let ourselves go. 
Well, one of the things that attracted me to Jim is that because so many of my boyfriends before that really loved to sit home and whatever their sport was, they needed to be home or be at a party to watch that game. Yeah. And when I met Jim and I, you know, I'm like, oh, well, you know, the so-and-so are playing tonight. Don't you need to like watch the Buckeyes or yeah. <laughs> whoever, yeah. you know? And I, I have no patience for that. Mm. Yeah, well, me either. It's like, who? I, first of all, the reason why I'm bad at watching sports is, you know, it, it was recently New Year's and a friend of mine said, oh, you, he lives in Pasadena. And he says, oh, do you want to come down and want to watch the New Year's Rose Parade? I'm like, no, I hate parades. He's like, what? <laughs> who hates parades? I'm like, I hate parades. Right. Same reason why I don't like watching sporting events. Not all, not 110%. Like, I'm not adamant about it. Like, I love watching the Olympics or something here and there. But I don't sit down because... A, my ass can't handle sitting down for three hours. I can't go. I don't like going to a game because my ass gets numb. I just, I've had that ever since my grandfather used to take me to see the Mets play in Queens and oh Shea Stadium. Yeah. And then he would take me to Aqueduct and Belmont Stakes. You know, to, yeah, right. It was just like, I can't sit. Like, I am I just, me I. Too. I used to have my leg going like this all the time. Like, you know, jittering all the time. And my dad would say, can't you calm down? Yeah. <laughs> and, and now with my disc issues, it's, it hurts. It actually, my butt goes numb yeah. and my hip hurts to sit for long periods of time and these are longer than movies like you know me it is a little yes. funny funny thing about me <laughs> i when i go to a movie i thank god that we have reserved seating now that yeah. was like the greatest thing that could ever happen to right. me because i don't like to sit i don't want to sit through the trailers like first of all they're just they take so much time and i'm already done with my popcorn and now i've got nothing to eat during the movie so that pisses <laughs> me off it's true they're like a half an hour of trailers. 20 to 30 yeah. minutes drives me yeah. bonkers but it's like okay now i have to so now the movie's two hours or an hour and 50 or two and now i gotta sit on my ass for another 30 minutes that's are you true. kidding that's me true it's hard to sit through i find it hard to sit through a movie and i can sit through the trailers i can't well can't. that's the thing is like the trail it's yeah. not just watching the trailers no. but it's the like oh I, another 30 minutes on my ass are you kidding <laughs> i remember i used to have friends that used to spend the whole day watching soap operas and stuff on tv like that would be their day their weekend or their weekday if they had school no school that day yeah. and i'm like i can't do that i could never hang out with my friends and sit in their basement watching, you know, soap operas. I had to do something. Yeah, right. I can't just sit. And so that, that was the thing. Yeah. I can't watch parades right. because people are marching yeah. and moving. Yeah. And I'm like, I just, and same thing, I can't watch like a lot of sports, right. like ba basketball. I'm like, everyone's running, everyone's running. I got to run. I got to run. I got to get, I got to run. You know, unless I'm really tired, if I've worked out for like two, three hours that day and I'm like wiped out and tired and I just want to sit there and like eat pretzels, then I can watch it. But I, if I haven't like moved my body first, there is no way I can't watch a game. And on New Year's Day, when those parades are happening, and it's like, I, I didn't get to the gym yet. The parade starts. I'm like, there's no way I can sit on my ass and watch a parade with all these people marching <laughs> <laughs> so and and Jim when I met him he said the same thing he's like I don't like to watch sports I'd rather do them I'm like oh, I love you will you marry me yeah, yeah exactly we met Perfect we match. met we marry me <laughs> <laughs> you know what I what my biggest pet peeve is it's terrible but it's been lately past couple of years having to go to someone's house for dinner like a dinner party <laughs> like, I cannot sit that long I cannot be polite that long I, I don't have the patience to sit there anymore Ugh. even a restaurant like I want to eat be done get out I wish it was the patience for me it is my ass literally well, is yeah, on fire yeah, my ass is from on having fire. a herniated yeah, disc me too. yeah you have herniated disc yeah. too so if you have herniations it's like <laughs> it's not your imagination that you can't sit you're not getting less patient no you're, well I am less patient too <laughs> yeah, okay so that's part of it but I yeah. lose my patience because my butt hurts. I know. Yeah, I mean, it is like it starts to get like a searing pain. I wasn't pain. like that when I was younger. I used to love to go out to a nice restaurant and do it the French way. You know, have a light, like big course meal over a few hours. I can't do that anymore. I'm, oh God! Get me in, get me out, feed me, and let me go. The only <laughs> thing that got me through through Paris was and those long meals was the fact that I knew we were going to get up and walk five miles right after. Yeah. You know, we had to walk a mile or two to get to the place we were going to go to, and then we were going to walk and walk and walk yeah, I love after. That. Oh, there's nothing better than taking a walk after a big meal. Yeah, so I put, yeah. but I mean, I let my, my ass took the brunt of it for a while. And I'm like, so hang on there, gluteus maximus. We're going to, we're well, going to go take a nice walk down the Shams. My husband, Ben, that's the thing that it was hard for us because he used to like to watch a lot of movies and he can relax. He knows how to chill out when he wants to chill yeah. out. He can spend an afternoon just reading a book or watching a movie. And I'm, he always says I'm too hyper. I don't know how to relax. Like it's torture for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so that was, so that was the whole thing. So I was wondering like how you felt like I don't know how it would have felt if Jim says hey I love golf would you love to learn how to play golf and it's like 
Mm. Well, Ben did not t- that much. You know, Ben <laughs> does things with me too. Like we garden together. I mean, when I garden, I have a big piece of land that I plant like hundreds and thousands of flowers and we dig up and that we enjoy that you know and then he took up some painting with me at one time we were painting together okay so he does do things we go cycling i like to cycle you know he wasn't as big a fan of cycling because he works more interactive type sports or he likes sports that are more like you know doing something rather than which is funny because he likes to sit and watch a movie but he doesn't really want to sit on a bike for too long interesting yeah so he'll do those things but i think he you know he brought me new things that were out of the box too Things okay. I wouldn't have done on my own. Like what else other than golf and playing bass? Well, that's, you know, basically golf, playing ga- and tennis. I mean, I wasn't, you know. Those oh, you didn't play tennis before? Mm-hmm. I would have thought that Joe and your mom would have been big tennis. No, Joe, no, Joe's no, her dad, Joe. would have been big uh, <laughs> tennis players. No, they were all about cycling, mountain biking, skiing, uh, you know, water sports. Because uh, Joe just strikes me as a guy that's going to get a little Lacoste on. Oh, no, no. Joe's not the Lacoste type. Interesting. I can see. Like, chopping through the woods and making a trail. True, but I can still see him <laughs> like getting on the court, like putting on his whites. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, all right. I'll get, you know, I guess because he plays golf. He'll put on his whites to go sailing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess. Okay. Well, that was the thing. Like, I told you, like, I love water sports. Like, I just like to be around water. It calms me. Mm-hmm. I don't like to be, because I have, oh. Raynaud's, like, oh, I don't know. Should awful. we talk about Raynaud's yeah, for a minute? Yeah, let's talk about that, because, you know, not, I didn't know what Raynaud's was either. All right, so Jill along. will now tell people what Raynaud's mm-hmm. phenomenon is, because some people may have it. So uh, Raynaud's, uh, R-A-Y-N-A-U-D-S, um, is a circulatory problem. The doctor will often tell you if they're just trying to brush you off. Your hands and your feet get cold. As you get older, it gets worse, and they turn kind of blue, and then they turn kind of white. <laughs> and they just and do you lose sensitivity? Like, do they go numb? Yeah, they're just freezing. I mean, feel my hands. Ah. No, like ice, ice, cubes. ice cubes. I always tell people, excuse me, I'm part vampire. I'm sorry. And that's not a, cir- a problem with the heart? Not circuit? Like... Uh, no, it actually doesn't Pumping affect your blood. Properly? No, it is. It's just in the peripheral peripheral arteries. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, peripheral uh, blood vessels, mm. not the arteries. No. So yeah, it's just in it's, it's just in the small blood vessels of the of the hands and feet. And I've you know you're born with it. You can get it from certain medications. Like some older people get it because they're taking a medication that constricts their blood vessels. Like blood thinners. Um, I don't. I'm not actually. I don't remember because uh, no, I don't take any. My of the, grandmother's fingers get blue now. Yeah, but did she have it when she was young? No. Okay, then it's from one of her medications yeah, she yeah. Started getting it now her fingertips will turn blue. right so that's secondary Raynaud's yeah. when it's when it's mm-hmm. a when it comes from a a side effect from mm-hmm. a drug so I was born with it I know when I was 14 years old I was with my friend people would say oh you have a low body fat I'm like no I used to be fat <laughs> so when I was 14 my uh, best friend and I at the time we were waiting we would always go to Ramon's shows and we would be the first one online and we would just like wait for like five hours hmm. like we just want to be there first when the when the roadies get there to do sound check maybe they'll give us a backstage pass but we will be there (laughs) so it was ice cold freezing one day in like february and we decided to go at like six o'clock doors didn't open till nine o'clock or we went at five o'clock whatever it was we went really early and it was a freezing cold day out and i'm wearing a, a mini dress with um thick tights and a pair of like pumps and it was an awful outfit, actually. That I, I, the pumps did not go. I'll never forget what I wore. I'm like, God, I wish I had better shoes. These shoes don't go. I'll never forget it. But <laughs> and then the coat didn't really match. I'm like, ah, the outfit looks great, but the accessories didn't work. Just telling you that as a fashion expert. Maybe you were PMSing. That's no, I didn't. Happen. Even, you know, I, you can't even put an outfit together. I know. I just didn't have the right black shoes yeah. to go. So I wore I, and. Um, much like today, metallics were in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I wore bronze pumps, but I was wearing black tights. I'm like, and thick tights. Yeah, black. I'm oh, like, that's oh. nice. yeah. I knew it didn't work, but I didn't have, you know, but that's what was in at the time. And uh, and I was wearing a black and red dress. And then I, all, the only coat that I had that was warm enough, I couldn't wear my red leather jacket because it was freezing out. And I so I had to put on like this big giant green coat that went down to my ankles because that's all I had. Wow. So anyway, so I'm sitting out there with my friend and I'm like, shaking like my hands I couldn't feel them my feet I couldn't feel them oh, y'all bet. Yeah. and I'm looking at my friend who's smaller and skinnier than me and I'm like aren't you aren't, 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 are you are you able to feel your hands she's like yeah I mean they're like cold 
you know, and she's like had to do like yeah. the rubbing her hands right. and had to move a little bit, but mine literally were numb. And I knew something was wrong at that point because I had more body fat than her. So I'm like, oh. this is not a body fat thing. So I just paid attention to it. And that was at 14 that I realized something was up with me I'm Kidding that other people didn't oh, have. Because right. I know when I was young, I was rarely ever cold. I mean, I think your metabolism is so fast and you're just warm all the time. Like I'd go out too at night and have a little leather jacket on and my high heels and I'd be walking on ice. <laughs> you know, I had yeah. a great balancing act. Today. Oh, and trust me, we were excited. You know, we were excited. We're yeah. singing Ramon songs yeah. and dancing totally. outside the club. And I still, I could not. My body would not. My hands were That's just. I, they, yeah. I could not feel my hands or my feet. No kidding. And so I knew something was wrong. I'm like, no one else has this but me. And then years, like you know, cut to literally twenty years later, a doctor told me it was called Raynaud's. Wow! And and that's what that is. It's um, it, it's a circular. It, it manifests as a circulatory problem, but it really is coming from uh, a mishap. I think in your um, hypothalamus, whichever um, whichever gland in your brain is telling your capillaries to open and close. You're kidding. See, it, I would have thought it was heart related. That's so It's not, yeah. Right. It's it well, so some doctors call it a type of arthritis. They call it arthritis of the blood vessels because okay. your blood vessels go into a spasm. Oh yeah. But your blood vessels are made out of actual a type of smooth. But why only on the fingers? I don't know. And the feet? I don't yeah, it's just fingers and feet. Yeah. And it's um that's why I'm wearing my Uggs. Yeah. And so anyway, so Ray knows it's and it's a problem. And as you get older it gets it gets worse and worse. But it's not really gonna kill you. You know, it's just a total freaking nuisance. Yeah. And now, like, I get, like, if you ever look it up online and you see pictures of it, now I start to get, like, you know, purple and blue and white. Like, my my finger, my finger, fingers, my hands start to look like a Jerry Garcia t-shirt. I, like, tie-dyed. I, mean, I hate that. I hate when my fingertips in the winter do get cold. Like, you know, if you've been outside and you don't have the right gloves. I'm talking about Canada. Yeah. That's an awful feeling. You lose total sensation. And then it really hurts, actually. Yeah. You know when they start warming up again, it starts to hurt? Yeah. Like, so that happens to me all the time. That is awful. Like, that happens to me in the summer. And it happens to you here in L.A. Yeah, yeah in, in, in the summer. That's like, all insane. I have to do is walk into an air... Con if I'm sweating outside, like yeah. I'm running or working out, then I then I walk into a place or the gym blasts the air conditioning or I walk into an air-conditioned room. It happens... So how do you teach a class with that if you have to do things with your hands? Well, I get really... So I start teaching and it opens up. Okay. Yeah. and But it takes a while. And then... So it takes me a long time to warm up. And then... But then as soon as the class is over and the, it goes back to 69 or 70 degrees degrees yeah. in the room my fingers are blue oh. and white and red it looks like a like it looks it's tie-dyed it's oh, crazy that's awful. and painful so it happens in all temperatures yeah, that's got to be really painful when you have rain though so oh, it sucks God. and so what they were doing a clinical trial on this was like maybe 10 years ago they did a clinical trial they're like oh what drugs open up blood vessels and they're like viagra opens up blood vessels <laughs> so they tested it so they so they tested viagra on it and then I never heard the results of that clinical trial. And I'm with Jim. And we go to Palm Springs one weekend. And I go, hey, do you have any Viagra? <laughs> I didn't even know if he did. But he's like, as a matter of fact, I do. I'm like, oh. What? <laughs> you didn't know? I wasn't sure. Like, we had mentioned it once. Like, oh, we're going on vacation. Should I take a Viagra? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, you know, I don't know if I can handle that many hours of you. But all right. <laughs> so I, I asked him on this one particular trip when we went to Palm Springs. Because I knew it was going to be winter in Palm Springs. And I was going to get it. Because it gets like, you know, it goes from like 60, 70 degrees in the day to like 30, 40 degrees at night. Yeah. And so I said, bring your Viagra. And I knew I would get, I knew the rain nodes would kick in. Right. And so I said, I'm going to try this. They were doing a clinical trial. I never found out the results. Let me see what happens. So I take a Viagra. And a whole Viagra. Well, uh, maybe. I don't remember. Jeez. I probably rain, won rain. Viagra. And <laughs> did I get a little horny? I'm like, yeah, I got a little horny. But... <laughs> The, but mostly, you know, if you look on the list of symptoms, yeah. it's like headache, stuffy nose, um, and I, I could not breathe out of my nose. I was like, oh, that's the <laughs> lovely sound effect. It's, I could not. I mean, I was like, oh my god, and my head was like a bong, a bong. Like there was. There was like... So what uh, I love about these medications is what they always tell you how great they are and then the possible side effects include... Two, those two <laughs> side effects I had like a thousand percent. But I never felt blood flow to my fingers and toes like I did that day. I was like, this is what normal people's hands feel like. This is amazing. I got to go get some Sudafed, but this is amazing. And oh, some yeah. Afrin. So I took like a... So I went, so we went, ran out to... I didn't sleep at all that night because I took Sudafed at like two in the morning. Oh my God. Yeah, we go out to Walgreens like 24 hour. I pick up some Sudafed and Afrin. 
And I squared that stuff. So now I can breathe. Nothing got rid of the headache. But I was like, oh, my God. It works on my hands. Did it work for your intimate life? Like, well, I, My headache was so bad. I was like, yeah. I ain't lying. I really do have a headache. Oh, <laughs> So. That sucks. I know. So I was like, I was horny, but I had such a bad headache, I couldn't. I don't think I, I could do anything anyway. I understand how Viagra works with a guy. Like, if he gets, you know, if he gets erect for four hours, what's he going to do with it for four hours? No, it's a danger if it, you're erect for four yeah, hours. What happens? How long are you supposed to, you know? You're not supposed to have sex for four straight hours. Oh, I thought it was so you could have long-term sex. Unless you have, like, eight women lined up. <laughs> or, like, you get skin I'll give you 30 minutes each, ladies. You get burns, line up. You get burns. Line up. You must get burnt. Blonde brunette red. Blonde brunette red. Blonde brunette red. <laughs> line them up. 30 minutes each. <laughs> <laughs> like the, Wait a second. These guys are older that take this usually. They can't even last a like, minute. They have a heart attack. Yeah, after. Seriously, probably all, the, all, probably all the sheiks in the Middle East are, have yeah. like, they probably own all the stock. Yeah. Why is stock in Viagra so high? Like all the sheiks have like I have 30 watts. 500 million shares. 70 mistresses. I, I, I bet. I don't know. I bet that's how they, I bet that's how they do it. You know, line them up. But really, guys that age, do they last 30 minutes? Like, I mean. Doing, you know, the, I, the action. I, I don't know. I'll ask Sheik, you know, <laughs> Mehmed, <laughs> the Khalid. So I don't know. Uh, but I, I think, not being a man, I think that you're supposed to have the ability to get it up over the course of four hours when you want to. It's like, okay, let's have sex. Good. That was nice. But those guys just stay erect? Like, they, it's like. I don't think so. Because, I mean, because Jim took it at the same time. So it's not like we went to Walgreens and he was like, down. <laughs> Put that away. Down. Tuck, tuck, down. Tuck it in. Down. <laughs> so it's not like he was batting it down. I think he was able to get the erection down when we went to Walgreens to get this. And then we came back. And I think at some point, I think the next morning, my headache subsided enough and we were able to have sex the next day. But I believe, and so yeah, so it lasted actually till the next morning. Oh my God. So I think you're able to like. That's strong stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think you're able to get an erection and then have it go down. But then when well, you want to. You know, Jim could have swing. served as a purse hook or a coat rack that evening. You know, like huh, hold my yeah, purse, Jim. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, you know, yeah, so I think it goes down, but then you can get it up whenever you want. Oh. I think. I don't know. Because, you know, in the movies, they always show these guys that can't get it down once they've taken Viagra. It's like stuck there for four hours. Or oh, no, I didn't hours. see that yeah. movie. What movie is that in? All these movies that they show when a guy takes a Viagra, you know, it's always uh. a standing joke. That the oh, okay. Like, well, yeah. I, yeah, I guess it's a joke. I, I don't know. But I do know that we were, so we, I took it at night. My hands felt amazing. Everything else felt like shit. But I was like, oh my God, this really freaking works on the rain. Wow. Notes. And then, and I was able to have sex the next morning, but I had that awful headache. I had the stuffiness. And then, you know, we went out the next morning and all was fine. Those crappy side effects. But the side effects were were gnarly on me. I can imagine. Yeah. So they need to find like something like Viagra for my hands. Maybe they have it. They don't. They don't yet. I mean, they've, they've been trying. And, and and there's not like, I think maybe something like two or six million Americans have it. I think it's like six million Americans really? have it. I Reynolds. never heard of it until you mentioned it. It's not completely, so I think it's six million. It's not like completely uncommon, but it's not a typical thing. Huh. It's not like, oh, everyone's going to get it when they get older. So it's not, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, that's what they call it, a phenomenon. Do you have arthritis? They call, they say that, I do have arthritis, they do say that uh, Raynaud's is a type of arthritis, an arthritis of the blood vessels, because mm. your blood vessels go into spasm. Right, yeah. Right. Huh. Um, but, uh, so they call it like that, that type of arthritis. But, you know, really to me, it's like, I just have an on-off switch. Either the capillaries are open, and I've got blood flow, or the switch is off, and I've got none. Hmm. So to me, it's like on or off. Wow. It's like it gets a little bit cold, click, light. Wow. Yeah, like the light bulb just goes off and my hands freeze. That's crazy. And there's nothing in between. That is really insane. I would hate that. I don't know. I think I would be taking the Viagra. It's a, it's a total it's a, it's a total. <laughs> living nuisance. on Viagra. <laughs> all right, living on Viagra. So we're, we're all, oh, yeah. So I had one, one quick fashion question before we go. Okay. I'm wearing Uggs. These are old ones. Oh, those are the Cardi knits, right? Yeah, these mm-hmm. are these are a couple years old. My other Cardi knits kind of fell apart. They got they got all stretched out on top. Yeah. So car, uh, Uggs okay for over fifty? Absolutely. We had this conversation. Yeah, but yeah. I'm wearing them now. Yeah, of course they are. They're age. They're they're any age. They I wasn't go from wearing toddlers them. Toddlers to a uh, hundred years old, if you want. Yeah, and people might not have heard that episode. We did. Yeah. We did discuss. Well, we had that discussion, but yes, absolutely, they're age appropriate. Okay, because there are people that just say they're ageless. Yeah, because there's still those fashionistas who go out there and say no Uggs. 
Yeah, but that, you know, you can't listen to everything. I mean, you got to make your own trends and they look good and I see they're selling like crazy still. Yeah. So, you know, people wear them and especially here when it gets damp and cold or in the winter, people wear them in Canada. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Well, my friend Susan won't let me buy Uggs anymore now. Well, I know why. I was just going to say that, you yeah. know, because it is cruel. Animal treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I thought they just shear the the sheep no, and then they just make the wool. wool. Yeah. This is I sheep did. skin. Right. Well, these are the wool ones. Yeah, but then you said that there's yeah. sheep lining on the, the lining inside. On the inside of sheep skin. So I feel terrible guilt because yeah. we have that. We'll talk about this in another episode because it's a whole big but thing. Do you feel terrible guilt wearing leather shoes, like leather boots that I'm wearing? Okay. Well, I want to discuss this in depth in another episode. Okay. But just just to give you the brief primer is that I don't think people will ever stop wearing leather. I don't take issue with leather, and I'm not a vegan, but um, I, I lean towards vegetarian vegetarian vegetarianism <laughs> vegetarianism. Right. So I lean toward I lean towards that. Um, I love I love being vegan, but the only reason why I don't do it is because I gain too much weight and I have to take too much vitamin B because, as you know, I ran my genetic report right. and I have a gene that makes me not get enough vitamin D. And also, there's a possibility I might be deficient in. Uh, I have a gene that makes me not synthesize enough vitamin B. Right. Um, so and you so you need to take those as a vegan or a vegetarian. So anyway, for so for genetic reasons, and I always know I don't feel as good as when I'm doing like a paleo diet. I do feel yeah. better doing that. So if I do eat anything that's an animal, I try to make sure that I've sourced it and that I, I trust that farm that it came from right. and that the animal's not been abused. Because that's really my issue is are the animals being tortured and abused? Because there's no, you know, until the Industrial Revolution, uh, until we had factories and then factory farms later on, like, you know, maybe 50, 60, 70 years ago, there was like animals didn't get abused like that so that's yeah. what I'm against and then I found out that the poor sheep get abused too for the Uggs yeah, now terrible. The, they get abused just to get wool sheared and they'll have cuts all that's what I'm body. saying yeah. yeah so I didn't know that they were that tortured yeah. so I don't know if I'm gonna buy buy Uggs again I do feel bad well anything that becomes mass-produced commercialized it's all about the money yeah yeah. And, and the reason why I feel like I, I feel like if and we'll discuss this in depth, but my my ten cent thought on that is that as a nutrition expert, that if people were meant to be vegan or vegetarian, then when we didn't eat meat, we wouldn't be deficient in the amino acid L carnitine. We wouldn't be deficient in vitamin B. Um, and people who are and vegan we wouldn't have the teeth we have, right? So you would. Right. So I think that we were we were born to actually eat meat, but I don't think we need to eat a lot of it. No. Matter of fact, more like I said in the beginning of this episode, that that lower protein diets are showing in these epidemiological studies to help people live longer. And the higher protein diets, they live a little shorter. Now it's epidemiological. It could be because the people who are eating meat, who happen to be you know the hundred thousand people in that study, happen to all be smokers too. You know. Well, listen. Or they drink too much. Hundred years ago or even like 70 years ago or whatever they didn't have all these fast food places people are over consuming as well yeah. and they're going to eat chicken and beef that's cheap because it's mass produced and it's deep fried or it's burgers yeah and people are just over consuming i mean that didn't happen 100 years ago you know you didn't have that at your fingertips so that's probably why you you know you're yeah, you couldn't eat meat every right. single day and that's why they're mass producing this meat yeah Right, so yeah, yeah, because meat became very cheap. Yeah, because and cheap of the and it was fast foods and the which is what's causing the animal torture. We shouldn't be eating what we're eating. Technically, I'm talking about yeah. generally speaking. Yeah, so to me, it's all about sourcing the food. So as far as wearing leather, I think that people will always be eating cow meat. Um, I don't eat pigs. Uh, that's for a couple of reasons, and uh, and and I eat a little bit of chicken. Uh, now and I eat mostly seafood, but I've actually cut back my protein a lot. So right. I'm actually, and when I was paleo, I was actually eating a little more meat mm -hmm. and I felt good, unfortunately. Right. And I was eating a little more meat than I am eating now. I cut back my protein um, and I actually felt better eating high protein. So you have to kind of do what feels best for you. But then if your number one thing is like animal cruelty, animal safety, taking care of, 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 um, or, or trying to, 
not fund factory farms, then I think definitely you should be vegetarian or vegan. And avoid fast foods because you're also not only supporting them, but you're also eating really unhealthy food. That's the number one thing. Right. Like don't eat don't eat chicken from Tyson, you know, like those yeah. those frozen things. Like just source it well and just you know really support the local agriculture, support the local farms. Like we go to a farmer's market and we try to pick up the meat from there because yeah, we know it came locally and they show us pictures of happy cow. Yeah, cow is smiling. Yeah, <laughs> you know, getting a belly rub. Yeah. Get a little hip massage. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I do feel guilty too because the more we become knowledgeable about how these things are happening, how they're being treated, because we didn't have the internet like you know 25 years ago where you could see everything. Today you can see everything oh, firsthand. Yeah. So you're becoming so much more aware. And now that you're more aware, you're losing your appetite for this. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, I lost my appetite for it the first time I saw what veal was. I was like, yeah. what? Well, you thought you thought that's right. And lamb, we think is baby. You know, it's a baby, and I did not know that somebody told you that it wasn't. Yeah, someone told me that lamb is not a baby. It's impossible. I, I'm like, whatever, you're high. What Look at the, those little, those are little, I couldn't, anyway. Yeah. So once I found that lamb was actually a real lamb, because yeah. I thought a hamburger doesn't come from from ham, no. <laughs> and yeah. veal, what's a veal? I don't know what a veal Why is. Why do they call it hamburger? I don't know. I think it has something to do with Germany, oh. and uh, and oh, I yeah Hamburg maybe yeah I think it has something yeah. to do with that. Okay. Just a you know educated guess, right. but um, yeah. So that's that's my that's my take on the whole thing. I think that humans are meant to eat some meat. We just have to be careful about where we source it. I'm not. I, I want factory farms to go away, so I do my best not to support it. I don't think we should be eating fast food. Well, the problem is they can't completely go away because they can't support the mass production when they're you know humanely farmed. They're smaller farms usually. Right, that's what I'm saying. So that if we just, if people stopped eating fast food, there wouldn't be as exactly. much meat. I mean, I didn't eat. Uh, you know, I, I. Okay, but then there's a budget for us. What about a family that can't afford to buy expensive? farm meat that's you know organic and humanely it's a little more expensive they should be vegetarian <laughs> <laughs> because it's vitamin b only costs 5.99 at, at costco or if they're feeding a family and then they have three kids it can be vegetarian yeah. it's cheap to be vegetarian yeah. you just gotta take but you gotta take some l-carnitine and you gotta take uh you gotta take a little maybe a little more amino acids than just l-carnitine and you have to take vitamin so b so it's a matter of educating people Absolutely, right. and they're trying to. Right. The problem is, is that the uh, factory farmers have so much money to lobby Congress. They really like hide all these facts from people, and then you know people are walking by McDonald's and they see like you know two Happy Meals for a dollar. Oh, you can't beat that, right? <sighs> well, yeah. So that uh, so it's uh, we'll we'll have a whole discussion on okay. this another time. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any parting thoughts? Oh, parting thoughts. Um, no, no. I was going to talk about a product I discovered Ooh, yeah. that I like for Do my tell. hair. It's called Pony O. Pony O. So it's a it's a ponytail holder that has copper in the middle. So it's not an elastic band. It's rubber, and you basically create your ponytail and you put it through the hole, and then you fold the corners, and it holds your ponytail really nice and tight, but it doesn't damage your hair at all. Ooh, we will have to do a demonstration. Yeah. So we promise on our YouTube channel, yeah. we're gonna do some cooking videos, because you have some great recipes, and we're gonna do some fashion stuff too, yeah. and then we'll do some fitness stuff right. as well. But so. the pony I, I bought it on Amazon, and you know I saw it on Instagram as a post, because like, lately I've been looking at a lot of Instagram posts, and I'm buying a lot of things to try them. Oh, cool, okay. So, you know, my hair was breaking a lot, because I have longer hair, hair pieces and I have short hair pieces and it's snapping and it's dry and I've over processed it. So this has been protecting it. Oh, cool. Yeah. I have to check that out. Yeah. All right. I haven't seen it. Okay. We have an email now. Yes, we do. It's called findtunedfemales at gmail.com. So when you see this, and we'll put it in the show notes too, but if anyone needs to contact us and tell us what we should and shouldn't talk about, although there's nothing I won't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I got no filter. Yeah. We're going to have to put a... a, a um, we'll need a disclaimer yeah, under... Disclaimer. <laughs> under, <laughs> or a muzzle or We something. are not responsible for what comes out of her mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Sorry. So, uh, yeah, finetunedfemales at gmail.com. So shoot us a note, and we'll see you next time. All right. Bye. Bye. We're wrapped. 